So this is section 3.12, and we are going to factor some quadratics. So last time we talked about factoring and greatest common factor, that sort of thing. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit farther. So let me start with an example, and I'm going to start with a multiplication. And we have done uh, problems like this before. We have something like x plus 4 times x plus 5. This form that we're in, see how it's something times something else? This is actually in factored form. In other words, um, oops, sorry. In other words, uh, it's something times something. Some things multiplied together. And if I multiply it out, I'll get a standard form, or there's lots of different names for it. But let me let me multiply this out. I'm going to multiply it out two different ways. First off, I'm going to do it this way: x plus four and x plus five. Um, x times x is x squared, 4 times x is 4x, x times 5 is 5x, 5 times 4 is 20. And now notice what I have. I'm not going to combine them like terms yet. I have x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 20. So um, if I were to combine like terms now, notice then I have uh, x squared plus 5x plus 4x is 9x plus 20. So we have that. Now, what we're going to do in this unit is we're going to go the other direction. If I give you this multiplied out form, I want you to be able to factor it. And looking at the relationships that are in here will, will help us figure this out. So a couple things that I want you to notice. Uh, first off is in this rectangle here, in this generic rectangle. Notice if I go that times that, 5x times 4x, I get 20x squared. And if I go x squared times 20, I get 20x squared. And that's true of any rectangle like this. If you do a cross, a, like a multiply across diagonals like this, those are equal to the same thing. Now that helps us. Uh, and what's really interesting about it is that that 20x squared, notice that that's like 20 times x squared, right? And that will happen every time as well. And the pieces that I got to the 20 were 5 times 4. Notice that those, those show up here, 5 times 4. So this is really key right here, thinking about this relationship. Um, this 9 is from 5 plus 4. It's a sum. This 20 is from 5 times 4. It's a product. And so notice the product is the 20, right? There's my 20s. And the sum is the 9. So let me do that thinking to try and factor, uh, factor an equation. So let's say I had something like x squared uh, plus 10x plus 21. Now, one of the things that I know is that... Um, Let's see, 21 times x squared. So 21 is my product. I know that things are going to multiply to this. And I know that things are going to add to that. So what I'm looking for is things that multiply to 21 but add to 10. So let me think about that for a sec. Things that multiply to 21. I'm just going to start uh, listing them. So 1 times 21, 3 times 7, and then 7 times 3. I start to repeat myself. And notice that. 3 and 7, or 7 and 3, the one works, because that's that's adds to 10. So again, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to this 21. Add to 10. So 3 and 7 are it. So that means I could rewrite this as x squared plus 3x plus 7x plus 21. Right? The box of that would look like x squared 21. Notice those just came from here and here. And then the 3x and the 7x, I figured those pieces out. What multiplies to 21 and adds to 10. And then what I can do is I can factor by grouping from here. So I could factor on here, like there's an x in both of these. There's an x in both of these. These are both divisible by 3. These are both divisible by 7. And then I can see my pieces. Or I can do it the way that we did it before, we factor by grouping. So I could say, group those, group those, take an x out of here, x times x plus 3. 
take a 7 out of here. And now since these both have an x plus 3 in them, I can factor out that x plus 3, leaving me x plus 3 times x plus 7. So that is uh, that's our first example. And I'm going to do our second example. I'm just going to erase the, the whole thing right now. I'm just going to clear all. Let's do another one. x squared minus 12x plus 20. So a couple ways for me to think about that. If I think about it here, my x squared's here, my 20's here. I want things that multiply to 20, but add to negative 12. Interesting. So if I have things that add, I multiply to a positive, but add to a negative, they must both be negative, right? A negative times a negative is always positive. So I want things that multiply to 20. So how about negative 1 and negative 20? I'm just going to list the factors of 20 right now. Negative 2 and negative 10, negative 3 and, uh, no, not negative 3, negative 4 and negative 5. And you might actually already see that to add to negative 12, those are them. Negative 12 and negative 10. Uh, sorry, negative 2 and negative 10. So I could write this here, negative 2x, negative 10x, and I could factor out of here, or I could break this up into the negative 2 and the negative 10. x squared minus 2x minus 10x, there's my negative 12, plus 20. Notice these two numbers add to negative 12, and they multiply to positive 20. Then from here I can do my factor by grouping. So I've got this group, and I've got this group. And there's a little bit of a subtlety in this problem. Um, these both have an x involved, so I'm going to take out an x, leaving me x minus 2. Notice that's a negative 10. I'm going to take out a negative 10. So I took out the 10, but I also took out a negative. So that's going to flip the sign. So this would be an x and then a minus 2. And one thing to think about that is if I multiply this back in, negative 10 times negative 2 is positive 20. Also, it's important in these that that matches that. So again, you can factor it here uh, with, the, with the box. You can factor it here. Since these both have an x minus 2, I can take out an x minus 2, leaving me an x minus 10. And there it is. That is factored completely. All right. Uh, let me do two more like this. Uh, x squared minus 2x minus 8. I think about that rectangle x squared would be here, negative 8 would be here. I'm trying to figure out the numbers that are, that are here and here in terms of x. In other words, I want things that multiply product to negative 8 and add to negative 2. So if they multiply to negative 8, they have to be opposite signs. So I have negative 1 and 8, 1 and negative 8. Uh, negative 2 and 4, 2 and negative 4. And now I just have to see which of these add to negative 2. So it looks like this pair right here. That adds to negative 2. So this would be like a 2x here and a negative 4x here. It doesn't matter which one you put where. So what I'm thinking about is this middle term, this negative 2, broken up into those two terms. So x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8. Again, notice these two numbers add to negative 2, and they multiply to negative 8. So now I'm going to factor by grouping this group and this group. <laughs> they look like they're the same. Let me clear that up a little bit. This group and this group. Uh, so in the first one, I can factor out an x, x times x plus 2. In the second one, I can figure out a, factor out a negative 4, right? Because that will make this an x. Took out a negative 4, so that's a positive 2. Sorry about that. Resting my arm across the keyboard. Uh, this matches this, so I can um, factor out the x plus 2. x plus 2 times x times 4. That is fully factored. Cool. One more example. x squared minus 2x minus 35. If I like my rectangle, it's going to look like this. 
and I'm looking for pieces that uh, multiply to negative 35 but add to negative 2. So if they multiply to a negative, they have to be opposite signs. So negative 1 and 35, 1 and negative 35. Um, 5, negative 5 and 7, 5 and negative 7. Ah, there it is right there. That adds to negative 2. So I'm going to split up this negative 2 as plus 5x minus 7x minus 35. Notice my two numbers, they add to negative 2, and they subtract, and, and then multiply, sorry, to negative 35. Uh, I'm going to factor this by grouping this group and this group. Factor out an x. Factor out a negative, negative 7. Notice how that sign switched because I took the negative out. And that helps because now I have an x plus 5 I can factor out. And that right there is fully factored. All right, now we're, I'm going to up the level here just a touch here. Uh, and we're going to get it so that if you notice, like the first number, the leading number out here has always been 1. Or, you know, it hasn't been there, so it's a 1. I'm going to say, like, what if this was a 2 out here, out, out front, or something like that? How would we deal with that? So that will be our next, our next piece. So let's do one like that. Uh, 2x squared plus 11x minus 6. And I want to factor this completely. So notice that I would have like a 2x squared and a negative 6 here. Um, remember earlier I said that this and this will always multiply to the same amount? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to multiply these together first. So 2x squared times negative 6 is negative 12x squared. So notice what that tells me is this has to multiply to that as well, these, these two numbers that are, that are right here. So that means that I'm not looking for products just of negative 6. I'm looking for products of negative 12 now. I want things that multiply to negative 12, but they still are going to add to 11. So let me think about that. So negative 12, if it's negative, they're going to be opposite signs. Um, and they have to add to 11. So it could be negative 1 and 12, uh, 1 and negative 12, and I actually see it there. If I don't see it, I would just, you know, keep listing 2 and negative 6, negative 3 and 4, 3 and negative 4. I have all these possibilities, but this is the one that works. That adds to 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this middle term using those values. So 2x squared minus x plus 12x. Notice how that multiplies the negative 12x squared um, and it adds to 11 minus 6. So that means that like a negative x would be here or, or here, either one of the two places, and the 12x would be here. And I can factor, you know, looking across or I can factor by grouping. I like to factor by grouping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So I've got this group and this group. Notice that these both have an x in them. So I could write this as 2x minus 1 plus, uh, these both have a 6, so I could take a 6 out. And notice it gives me a 2, whoops, a 2x minus 1 again. This will happen every time. Um, if I'm doing this right, this will match that. Which is great because now I can factor that out. 2x minus 1 times x plus 6. And that is in factored form. Let's do another example like this. Uh, 4x squared plus 5x plus 1. All right, so my box would look like I have a 4x squared here and a 1 here. And I remember that these multiply to the same values. So 4x squared times 1 is, is 4x squared. So this would also have to multiply to 4x squared. So that's what my product is, uh, the, the 4. So I want things that multiply to 4 but add to 5. So 1 and 4, 2 and 2, I'm just listing, you know, uh, factors of those. 1 plus 4 is 5. So I'm going to use this 1 and 4 to split up that 5 into an addition. So 4x squared plus x plus 4x plus 1. Notice that the x and the 4x, 
they add to 5x and they multiply to the 4x squared. Cool, now I'm going to factor by grouping. So group them. Here I can factor out an x. Uh, here, there's really nothing to factor out, so I'm going to factor out a 1. And I did that so it was written in this form, so that, boom, boom, now I can factor out that. 4x plus 1 times x plus 1. I'd like to do one more example like this. And I'm just going to clear all. So my rectangle would look like 2x squared negative 6. I know that this multiplies to this. So this would be negative 12x squared. This would be a negative 12x squared as well. So I'm not looking for things that, that multiply to negative 6. I'm looking for things that multiply to negative 12. And add to 1, 1x. So let me factors. Uh, factors of negative 12, they're going to be opposite signs because that multiplies to a negative. Negative 1 and 12, 1 and negative 12. Negative 2 and 6, 2 and negative 6, negative 3 and 4, 3 and negative 4. Now which of these add to, to 1? Ah, right here. These ones. So I'm going to rewrite this 1x as 2x squared minus 3x plus 4x. Right, I'm, I'm splitting up this x into that. And then minus 6. Notice this combination I have, it adds to 1x and it multiplies to negative 12x squared. Next I'll factor by grouping, so I'll group them like this. Uh, on this first one I can just factor out an x, 2x minus 3. The second one I can factor out a 2, it looks like. And now since these both have a 2x minus 3, I can factor that out. And that is in factored form. Great, so if you're with me so far, that is fantastic. I'm going to add one thing to this. All we've been doing is factoring. We haven't been solving. So there will be times when we're asked to solve. So let me go back to a problem that we did earlier. x squared plus 10x uh, plus 21 equals 0. So now that it has an equal sign in it, we can solve it. We can actually find x values that make this true. If we plug in those x's, they give us 0. So um, the way I'm going to solve this, uh, I'm going to factor it. So x squared, 21. Things that multiply to 21 and add to 1. Uh, sorry, add to 10. So 21 and 21, 3 and 7. There they are. 3x, 7x. So this is x squared plus 3x plus 7x plus 21. Still equals 0. I can factor this by grouping. Oops, sorry. Factor out that x plus 3. Now, one last thing to do. Notice these two things are multiplied together. They're in factored form and they equal 0. If I multiply, the only way I can multiply and get 0, like 5 times what is 0, one of the things has to be a 0 in order for you to, me to multiply and get a 0. So what that means is either this thing ends up being 0, or this thing ends up being 0. So I can just solve this. So subtract 3 from both sides. x equals negative 3. Subtract 7 from both sides. x equals negative 7. And I have two answers. And make sure you list both answers when you do that. Um, you're going to end up with problems. Boom, boom, boom. You factor them and it might be like 2x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. Right? We did all the factoring work. Or I pretended like we did. Um, and I'm in the same situation. These two things multiplied together give me 0. So that means that this equals 0. Or this equals 0. And I solve them both separately. So subtract 1 from both sides here. 2 equals negative 1. Divide by 2. x equals negative 1 half. On this one, add 3 to both sides. x equals 3. So there's my, there's my two answers. All right, uh, be careful on the assignment if it's asking you to factor or to solve. If it's asking you to solve, you're going to look, f you're going to give two answers, two number answers. If it's asking you just to factor, then your answer will be, you know, something like this. Message me with questions. Let me know how you're doing.